there was a small village surrounded by green hills and farms. Princess Adan lived in this little village. Her father was King Chukwemeka, who ruled over the village. Adan was the king's oldest daughter. She was known as a kind and gentle princess who treated the villagers well. But Adan had a difficult issue. She struggled with her whole life. She had very strong body odor that smelled quite bad. Even when Adan was a young girl, she smelled much worse than the other children. The bad smell got worse as Adan grew up. It was a pungent, unpleasant smell that trailed behind her wherever she walked. As Princess Adan grew into a young woman, the people in the village started treating her differently. They tried to stay away from Adane because of her very bad smell. Behind her back, some villagers made unkind jokes and comments about how stinky the princess was. Some mothers with children would quickly pull their little ones inside their houses when they saw Adan walking down the dusty village road. The young girls, who used to be Adan's friends, would turn and go the opposite direction to avoid talking with her. This made Adan very sad. There were many young men in the village and neighboring kingdoms who wished to court Adan because she was pretty and the king's daughter. However, as soon as they got within six feet of her, they were driven away by her odor. They decided not to pursue her despite Adan's beauty and royal title. This left the princess very lonely. She stopped leaving the palace most days. Princess Adan would simply stay in her bedroom and gaze out her window, dreaming of true love and a man who could accept her smelly situation. She imagined a husband who would not care about her strong body odor, but would love her for her kind heart. But it seemed impossible, and Adan cried many tears over feeling so alone. It was a hot, vibrant summer day in the village. Princess Adan was up in her castle bedroom, fanning herself. She left her shutters open, hoping to catch a breeze. Then Adan heard lively sounds floating up from the village square. Joyous drum beating and people laughing. She leaned out her window and saw people dancing around a bonfire, celebrating the summer feast day. Adan felt a stirring of excitement. She thought maybe she could sneak out of the palace and observe the festivities without being noticed. People seemed so happy and distracted by the dancing. So, Princess Adan quietly left the palace and tiptoed to the edge of the village square. For a few moments, no one realized she had joined them. Adan stood in the shadows, watching wistfully as girls her age spun fast in their colorful skirts. But soon, a breeze blew, carrying Adan's unfortunate odor through the crowd. People wrinkled their noses, glancing around to find the source of the stench. Then the drum beats and dancing halted as all eyes turned toward the lonely princess. Mouths fell open in shock before twisting into unpleasant sneers. People doubled over gagging and whispered behind their hands while pointing at Adan. The carefree joy of moments before had vanished. Adan's eyes filled with humiliated tears. Adan felt utterly embarrassed and ashamed after being ridiculed while dancing at a village gathering. With tears flooding her eyes, she ran away from the crowd and took cover behind some bushes to hide. She crouched down, trembling behind a tree, hoping no one would find her. But then she heard the distant, steady beat of a drum growing louder and getting closer. Fearfully, she peered through the leaves to see who was approaching. To her surprise, it was a smiling young man from a neighboring village, cheerfully playing a hand drum as he walked directly toward her hiding spot. When he reached her, he stopped playing and kindly asked, Why did you stop dancing back there? You looked so joyful and free while you were dancing. Adan was stunned that this stranger had followed her all the way here, especially since he was able to detect her unusual scent. She replied incredulously, You, you can smell me, and yet you still came looking for me here. Everyone back in my village teases me and laughs at my dancing. The young man responded gently, Don't worry about them. I think you're a wonderful dancer. 
please ignore their unkind words and keep dancing with happiness and freedom. Adan was surprised by the young man's kind words. She realized he truly didn't care about her differences. Comforted, she decided she would ignore the cruel taunts of her neighbors and dance freely, just as she wished. The young man started playing a cheerful, upbeat rhythm on his hand drum. Adan was unsure at first, but after a moment she began swaying lightly in time with the music. The stranger's smile grew even wider as he watched her start to move. He picked up the pace of his drumming, playing faster while keeping his eyes fixed warmly on Adan's. Adan could feel that he was truly seeing her, not just her outward appearance, but her heart and soul. For the first time she could remember, she felt completely accepted just as she was. This realization freed her spirit. She let go of her self-consciousness and began dancing fluidly, her body unfurling into graceful motions that left her feeling breathless and elated. As the drumming accelerated, Adan's feet flew faster. She leapt and spun with ease, weaving swift, elaborate steps that came to her instinctively. The rhythm seemed to flow through her, filling her with joy and vitality. With the stranger's admiring gaze holding hers, she felt liberated to fully express her love of dance. When Princess Adan finally stopped dancing, she and the smiling stranger held each other's gaze for a moment. Adan felt exhilarated from the joyful dancing and uplifted by the first time she had felt truly seen and accepted by someone. The two of them then suddenly started laughing together, connecting in their shared happiness. After they caught their breath, the young man told Adane his name is Arinze. He lives in the village nearby and plays drums in the squares for events and celebrations. Arinze asked Princess Adan if she would meet him in this same spot in the bushes again tomorrow. He wanted to talk more and maybe play his drums for her to dance some more. His warm smile and enthusiasm made it clear he had greatly enjoyed their time together. Princess Adane Ijerli said yes, she would definitely meet Arinze here again tomorrow. Her heart felt fuller and lighter than it had in years. All her life she had been shunned and lonely due to her odour issues. But this stranger had accepted her and even delighted in her dancing. Adan hurried home, her head spinning, still giddy from the exhilaration of truly being seen. She was overjoyed at having met someone who wanted to meet again. For the first time ever, she had made a real friend, and her heart swelled with optimism and excitement about their next meeting behind the bushes. In the coming weeks, Princess Adan's meetings with Arenz were the highlight of her days. Each afternoon, she would eagerly sneak away to their secret spot in the bushes, where Arenzo would already be waiting with his drums. The two new friends enjoyed long, lively conversations, telling stories and jokes that had them laughing for hours. While they talked, Arinze often picked up his drumsticks and played energetic rhythms which delighted Princess Adan and inspired her to dance with a freedom and joy she had never known. She let go of all self-consciousness about her lingering odor issues when around Arinzi. He made her feel so accepted. She was able to lose herself in the music. Her wild, uninhibited dancing enhanced their connection even more. When Adan twirled past Arinze, he looked at her with admiration for her spirit, her beauty, her essence. Over several weeks, their initial bond grew into a trusting, deep friendship and then budded into warm affection felt on both sides. As Princess Adan fell in love with Arinze and felt his equal caring for her in return, a part of her ached secretly. Because of their differing stations in life, he a commoner, struggling musician, and she a sheltered royal with obligations to marry well. For political ties, she assumed a future together as impossible. Though the princess wished desperately in her most private dreams that social status would not interfere, and that they could be bonded in marriage, 
for she had never felt so happy and accepted as she did with Arinza. One afternoon, as Princess Adan and Arinze sat closely talking and laughing as usual, he reached over and gently took both of her hands in his. His expression changed to become serious and full of emotion. Arinza told Adan that he cared for her deeply and wanted them to be together forever. He asked her to marry him, exclaiming his wish that their two villages could be joined through their union. Arinze said he didn't care about royal customs or getting permission. He only knew that being with Adan made him truly happy, and he wanted them to build a life bonded in love. Princess Adan was overcome with surprised joy at his heartfelt proposal. She cried tears of happiness, having wanted nothing more than to be Arunzi's wife, but assumed it could never come to pass. Adana felt she didn't deserve such a wonderful man willing to overcome all social barriers to declare his unconditional love for her. In her excitement, Adan threw her arms around Arenze, whispering, Yes, against his smiling lips as they shared a long, tender kiss. She had never imagined a love so freeing could be hers. When they finally pulled back, faces flushed and beaming with giddy smiles, the lovers made enthusiastic plans. Still high on new possibilities, the princess and the drummer boy agreed they must share the wonderful news with both of their families right away. They would first ask Adan's parents, the king and queen, for permission to marry, then travel to Arinzi's village to gain his family's approval and blessing too. The ecstatic pair clasped hands tightly as they set off on their new journey together towards a future as husband and wife. However, soon after their engagement, immense tragedy struck the villages and Princess Adan's happy new world came crashing down. A deadly, fast-spreading plague swept swiftly through the countryside. The early symptoms were a raging fever and skin covered in large, boil-like blisters. Within days, those infected would go into violent fits of madness then fall deathly still. It was a horrific, painful way to die. In desperate efforts to contain the terrifying outbreak, leaders of the four neighboring villages made the decision to completely seal off their borders. No one was permitted to travel between the towns for any reason. If villagers tried to flee, they would be captured and quarantined, or even killed on sight by fearful guards. As the plague raged on week after week, residents hid in their family homes, terrified to interact with anyone who might be infected. Friends and neighbors boarded up their doors and windows, only emerging briefly for provisions before scurrying back to self-imposed isolation. For Princess Adan, weeks horribly turned into months of being cut off entirely from her beloved Arinzi. She was trapped within the palace as the plague circled hungrily. All Adan's hopeful joy at the future with Arinzi faded into a daily fear for his safety, without any way to reach him. The villages remained frozen in their quarantine isolation for endless months as the plague ran its course. Adan and Arinzi could only pray the other was still alive. Despite isolating herself within the royal palace, eventually Princess Adan awoke feverish with the terrifying red boils beginning to spread across her arms. The plague had reached her. The princess grew gravely ill over subsequent days. Her body raged in fevers so severe that her dressing gown and bedsheets were constantly soaked through with sweat. The crushing fatigue from fighting the illness left Adan too weak to even lift her head for sips of water. Seeing their eldest daughter suffering so, was agonizing for the king and queen. They desperately tried every traditional remedy and modern medicine the royal doctor offered up. From herbal baths to maggot poultices meant to draw out the disease. But nothing worked to ease Adana's worsening condition. The situation became dire as the ghostly pale and motionless princess seemed to slip away before their eyes. Finally, in despair, the queen recalled an obscure tonic an old village woman had once brewed when Adan was little. 
Though repulsed, she had the doctor mix the potion made of bitter roots and weeks old animal blood. They gently spooned the revolting concoction into Adan's mouth. Miraculously, just a day later, the princess finally stirred. Over the next week, under round-the-clock care, the strange medicine along with the queen's loving touch slowly brought Adan back from the brink. Though still very frail, Princess Adan had survived the illness that had killed scores of others. Overjoyed, her parents wept thankful tears as their daughter's fever broke fully, and she managed her first want but beautiful. After several more days of rest and recovery, Princess Adan finally felt strong enough to carefully stand up from her sickbed. Still quite unsteady on her feet after so long prone and weak from fever, she shuffled slowly across the room, one hand trailing the wall for balance. Adan made her way to the full-length looking glass standing in the corner. As she peered anxiously at her reflection, the princess gasped aloud in shock. She barely recognized herself. The plague's vicious fever had tormented her body for so many days that her skin now looked fresher and suppler than Adan could ever remember. Turning in profile, she found with joy, but most incredibly, as Adan lifted her arm hesitantly to her nose for a sniff, she discovered not a hint of her chronic, lifelong body odor lingered anymore. The prolonged feverish sweating must have somehow purged the smell entirely from her pores. Princess Adan let out an ecstatic laugh, twirling experimentally while inhaling her now sweet-scented skin in delighted disbelief. This wonderful cure was like a miracle. Words couldn't express her euphoria to finally be free of the odor that had plagued and isolated her since childhood. Nearly weeping in her happiness, Adan rushed excitedly to share the glorious news with her parents, the king and queen. She wanted everyone to know immediately that the infection which had nearly killed her had instead brought astonishing new confidence and joy into her life. After many more months, finally the rampant plague began dying away, and the strict quarantines on the villages could be lifted at last. As Princess Adan walked through the main gate of the castle for the first time in over a year, she held her breath nervously. She still remembered vividly the last time she had tried to join festivities in town, only to be met with the usual cruel recoils, whispered insults, and people pulling their children away to avoid her stench. But amazingly today, no one shied from Adan's approach. Villagers paused their revived marketplace bartering to gaze in admiration as the princess floated by. Villagers paused their revived marketplace bartering to gaze in admiration as the princess floated by. Adana was startled to hear praises called out for her graceful bearing and glowing health. Some even cautiously stepped nearer, wide eyes drinking in her beauty, looking entranced in her presence. The local young men in particular couldn't seem to stop boldly watching the princess's every move, their mouths hanging half open with affection. For the first time she could recall, Adan moved through her kingdom feeling strong, confident and truly accepted. It seemed over the course of the plague's horrors, her cured odor and new uplifted confidence had transformed her into a village belle that no one could ignore. Princess Adan was dizzy with the thrill of acceptance and admiration from villagers she used to hide from. Caught up in self-pride over her cured odor and newfound beauty, she had nearly forgotten her loyal love, Arinz. But walking through town, she spotted a familiar figure bounding eagerly down the road towards her. It was Arinz, her dear friend, companion, and bridegroom-to-be, who she hadn't seen in over a year since the plague hit. Adan's first eager impulse was to run straight into his arms with teary relief for his safety. But she caught herself short, doubts surfacing. Surely now she was too high above someone of common status like Arinz. She was a pampered royal, and he a drummer boy without notable wealth or family name to elevate him. 
thoughts swirling insecurely, the princess composed her face into a formal distant mask before Arins could reach her. When he did, the drummer boy was grinning fit to burst. Desperate delight shone through as he cried, My princess, how I have missed basking in your beauty and radiance. He moved toward her as if expecting a warm embrace. But Adan stood reserved and still, making no move to welcome him back after their long separation. Arinze joyfully stepped forward to hug Princess Adan, so thankful to see his beloved betrothed again after agonizing months apart. But the princess recoiled sharply away from his opening arms. A look of deep surprise and hurt flashed across Arinze's face at her rejection. Confused, he searched her now cold eyes questioningly. In sharp, cutting tones not like her warm voice of old, Adan stated that she no longer wished to continue their relationship. She told him that after enduring the plague's terrors and emerging more beautiful than ever, she now moved in different higher social realms than a common boy like Arinze ever could. Arinze looked deeply hurt by Adan's harsh words, his anguish evident on his face. But Adan, I love you, he protested passionately. These months of silence only made me love you more. I'd do anything to make you my wife. Princess Adan met his gaze with a fiery glare. You will address me as Princess Adan, she commanded coldly. This conversation ends here. I deserve someone better than you. She spat out the words, feeling a cruel satisfaction in them. Then, without a backward glance, or a pause to listen to his heartbroken crees, she swiftly turned away, marching off with determination. She blocked out Arinzi's angry shed shouts, her chin held high, hoping her fancy clothes and eluf demeanor hid the pain she felt inside. In Adan's mind, cutting off their connection so abruptly closed that chapter of her life for good. Now, she had plenty of noble suitors vying for her attention. In the following months, the increasingly vain princess continued with court life, acting as though the humble drummer boy Arinzi had never touched her heart. She entertained extravagant marriage proposals from respected lords and princes one after another. These influential men had once turned away from Adan in disgust. But now, shamelessly, they showered her with flattery, eager for the attention of the newly transformed princess. Adan grinned as she soaked up their compliments about her flawless skin, graceful movements and regal demeanor, praises that she could never have imagined receiving before. Despite the adoration, she couldn't shake the regret gnawing at her heart for pushing Arinzi away so harshly. As weeks passed, King Chukwemeka urged Princess Adan to quickly choose a husband from the numerous suitors vying for her hand before rumors damaged her marriage prospects. Wanting all eyes on her, Adan declared she would host a wrestling tournament where the kingdom's strongest men would compete for the chance to marry her. Upon hearing this, men of great strength traveled from far and wide, eager for the opportunity to win the hand of the renowned beauty. In the days leading up to the tournament, Adan became obsessed with enhancing her appearance to outshine everyone. Her maids tirelessly groomed her, but in her pursuit of outer perfection, Adan neglected basic cleanliness, even forgoing regular baths. Slowly but surely, Adan's old body odor returned. On the morning of the wrestling tournament, the weather was perfect, providing an ideal backdrop to showcase Princess Adan's beauty. She entered the bustling arena, adorned in shimmering silks and adorned with jewels, aiming to dazzle the crowd. As Adan lifted her delicate hand to wave at the cheering crowd, their excitement suddenly changed. A surprised whisper spread quickly among the people. They moved away in disgust, wrinkling their noses at the strong smell coming from the princess. Embarrassed men hid their faces, looking away to avoid eye contact. 
Princess Adan felt deeply embarrassed when the tournament participants shook their heads and left, wanting to avoid her. The villagers watching the tournament also followed, talking quietly about her body odor and holding their noses in disgust. Adan felt utterly crushed and ashamed. She quickly removed her fancy royal clothes and jewelry, dropping them in the dirt. With tears in her eyes, she turned and ran away as fast as she could. As Adan ran, her eyes landed on one person standing alone across the tournament grounds, Prince Arinze. He stood tall and straight, looking at her with kindness as she hurried away. After a moment, Arinze walked purposefully towards her, his face showing both concern and sadness for her distress. When Arinze reached Adan, he spoke gently to her. My dear precious one, how could you think so little of our love and what we meant to each other? Why would you give up our bond for the fleeting attention of others? Tears rolled down Adan's cheeks as she shook her head. Please forgive me, Arinze. I made a terrible mistake, thinking that looking beautiful on the outside was more important than our love. I was vain and careless, and now I've lost the most important thing in my life, your love and care. <laughs>